Well, I guess one nothing's kind of an improvement on 8 nothing. Hey, did you see Dougie last night? Oh, Dougie Gilmore, Ron and Don at the ceremonial puck drop. I mean, that's sick, right? Well, actually, I meant Dougie Hamilton. Yeah, I know that. I'm just much happier pretending he doesn't exist. And then, yes, please, dude. What a great goal. Dude, crazy throwing waffles. Woo. Who are you? Optimus Prime. Leafs lose one nothing to the Buck. And just like almost every game so far this season, goaltending anything but a problem for the Leafs. Well, okay, Scrivens had a hard time holding onto his equipment, but Reimer was really good. You got to admit, Scrivens' glove falling over was pretty funny. Anything to distract from the Leafs losing a one nothing game, and getting scored on in the first period. Speaking of that goal, his first as a Boston Bruin, second of his career, Chris Bork. Now I've been begging and begging you to go to theleafsnation.com because I post my videos there, but there's also a lot of other great blogs, and we always have a post game blog, and I'm gonna read an excerpt from it. The excerpt reads, and I quote. The goal wasn't scored against Koska and Dion Phaneuf, nor was it scored against the ragtag second pairing of Mike Komisarek and John Michael Lyles. The Leafs' three fighters were on the ice at the same time. Mark Frazier, Colt Knorr, and Frazier McLaren. Replays show Cody Franzen losing his man in front of the net, but Chris Kelly was able to skate the puck in with relative ease and bring it deep. I like Franzen and don't think the goal's on him, he had a pretty solid game otherwise. And I feel like I've talked about this before with the Bruins, but here's the effect they have. They're big and bad enough that they make teams dress players like Colton Orr and Fraser McLaren and Mark Frazier. And then by the end of the first period, you're like, oh right, they're really good too. And then you start to lose and then you lost. And they just sent Ryan Hamilton out and I'm like, but, but, but the shutout. Not that he's just automatically going to score a hat trick at the NHL level, but, but the shutout. And by the way, Mark Frazier, two fights this game with McDermott, something McDermott. And here's what I find myself doing more and more with NHL fights. Woo, hey look, if I, I don't care. Because I just see those two fight and I'm like, and what? And they fight again later in the game, McDermott lands a big shot on Frazier and I'm like, and? Not only is this not exciting, it's just straight up dumb. And here's the frustrating part. Should Mark Frazier be playing a ton of ice time? Maybe not. But Carlisle's already way overplaying Dion Phaneuf and Mike Koska, and now Carl Gunnarsson's injured, so Koska's playing like 28 minutes a game. Meanwhile, Mark Frazier, two, two fights, he's sitting for 10. Dear Jake Gardner, please come back soon because Randy's out of ideas. And so many fans are getting on Koska. Y y don't get on Koska. You're getting mad at a square peg for not fitting into a triangular hole. He should be on the Leafs, he should be playing a part, he should be even playing a big part, but he's playing way too much. And I said this before about Dion Phaneuf, to get the most out of him, I think he's playing too much. There's only like, maybe, enough to fit on one hand. Five guys in the entire league that can play like half an hour a game. Speaking of which, I'm getting really tired of seeing Zidane Chara and Phil Kessel, aren't you? I was working at Hockey Night in Canada last night for this game, and one of the editors, Pete, made a hilarious point. He's just looking at Chara on skates, standing next to Ron McClain, Don Cherry, and Doug Gilmore. And he's just looking at him and he says, he looks like one of the guys from Avatar. And I was just laughing because that's funny and oh my god, he kind of does. And CBC showed this one play where Kessel is just scurry, scurry, scurry going around the net and Char is just with his huge giant arm and stick. You gotta start calling Char Notorious B.I.G. because he plays Kessel close like butter play toast. Nah, I mean? And even still with that giant on him all game, Kessel had a few scoring chances and nope. And again, not for lack of trying, not for lack of getting the chances out there, Kessel's been looking good, he just hasn't put it in the net. He doesn't have Lupul with him, so what do you do? What do you do to get Kessel going? Let me know. Someone on Twitter last night suggested scratching him, and I'm like, get out. And as for the defensive situation, what do you do on that? Do you, do you just wait? It's a shortened season. I don't know about trading for help. I don't know. So, like I said, theleafsnation.com, hopefully where you're watching this video right now, check out the post-game blog. Uh, just go through the site, or I'll just post the link in the underbar. And slash or, there's an article right before that written by Jeffler on the Marley's win. A lot of people were asking for Marley Minute again, and it's like, I don't have time, but here's a written thing. Leafs and Hurricanes next. Let's see what they got.